living things create themselves. They structure their next moment. And what do they create themselves out of? Well, the environment. Right? You inhale and exhale and eat food and all that, walk on the ground. So living things have these two characteristics. One of them is that they imply forward. They are an implying forward. I want to come back to make that difference. They don't just sit there and then also imply. They are an implying. And secondly, they, they have the, the characteristic of being already interaction before they are anything distinct. That the, the, the embryo is already interaction. You don't wait nine months and get a body and then say, how do you do? Let's interact. It is an interaction. We are interactions, and not just as persons with each other, but uh, as tissues already. So now looking back from there to most of our science and most of our psychology, uh, no wonder we're struggling with this non-formulated, non-entity, non-distinct, non because everything that we were taught is couched in concepts, and here now is philosophy. Everything we are taught is couched in concepts that are structured to be just is things. Something is out there in time and space, and it doesn't care about me, and I'm sitting over here and I'm looking at it. Concepts, or I'm measuring it, or I'm theorizing about it, or I'm representing it, those concepts are all of the same kind. They have a certain structure. They are space-time location structures. And physics is already for 125 years past there, but it hasn't brought the rest of science and the rest of philosophy along ver very well yet. Because those kind of concepts render everything as this, this clunk that sits over there in time and space and doesn't need you and doesn't need me and is out there. And that is a characteristic of making. So again, we mustn't condemn it or put it down because here I'm talking to a microphone and uh, we can't live anymore without the technology. But these clunks that are over there without us, that's an essential human capacity. People who study monkeys call it the external tie because monkeys lack it. The monkey can't think about putting two sticks together and winding something around it so you get one long stick so you can reach the bananas. He holds the the two sticks together with his hand. He can't think of the two sticks without himself. Or, or you can say he can under, under various circumstances, but the distinction is not clear. Human beings make distinctions. So we say, well, we can make a length. So we tie them together and then we have a long thing. And we can construct all kinds of things with lengths. Well, lengths don't exist, actually. They're a human product. Mathematics doesn't exist either. It's a pure human product. And with it, we rearrange everything and make things. And it's wonderful. Just don't fall for it, OK? <laughs> You're not the screens. You're not neurology. Um, neurology is precious. It cures people. But you're not neurology. And you're not geometric units. And you're not lengths. You're sitting in the chair. Now, why is this philosophy? This is philosophy because one way to say it is philosophy is about kinds of concepts. Philosophy, the way I understand it, really isn't about anything. It's about about. <laughs> so when I say it's the kind of concept that we need to change, I'm doing philosophy. Another way to say something like it is, in philosophy, what the words mean changes. Each major philosophy uses the same old words of the, the whole and the part and the same and the different and the, the body and the perception and the behavior and the, all that, but it means something different and you've got to read it at least twice to get on to what it means. 
it is like that. And I'm used to that because uh, for, for the 32 years I taught at the university, I had to always convince these good students that it wasn't their fault that they couldn't make heads or tails out of it the first reading. I'd say you don't, it's like a crossword puzzle. You don't expect to sit down and write a crossword puzzle. Uh, well, this, you can't read philosophy that way either. You have to read it through once to see how the words appear and relate to each other and say, oh my God, you know, and then when they translate, they keep you from doing it. And that's really bad. I want to get into that. <laughs> uh, I want to tell you that in the, in the real Buddhist literature, the mind is in the chest. But translators don't permit English to say that because you, they say you can't say that in English. So I'm, now that I've gotten this far, I'm, I suddenly have this thought of saying, so I'm proud of the fact that translators tell me all the time also, you can't say that in Portuguese. And I say, well, you can't say it in English either. <laughs> I'm saying it. So the meaning of words changes. The first word I want to tackle is uh, meanings changing is uh, words like mind and body. That what they tell you about the mind, that's not our mind. It's a very useful analytical tool to bring out even more, yes, but that's not our mind. And what they tell you about your body, that's not your body. Be grateful that we have that. That's medicine, that's physiology, that cures, that, that's why I'm here right now. Uh, I'm not going to say that that's wrong or anything, but that's not my body at all. It's, a, it's an analysis of my body that we need. It would be like a photograph with lines on it, or it would be like, like the earth with meridians on it. it. Meridians are very important. They help us find things. The Chinese meridians are also very important because they help us find things. Every theory that's any good at all is important because it helps us find things. Now I, I can use an example from therapy to say what I mean here. Every theory is a precious, valuable thing because when you think of it, all of a sudden you see something that's there, but you might not have seen it if you hadn't had the theory. And uh, Donnell was at just such a point. He said, well, do you think that it's only there because you looked at it like that? No. Is it only there because you interpret it as such? No. Or sometimes yes, but then, of course, that's the, exactly the difference. When you're working with a, with a person, it can never be what you think or what you say. It's always going to be what you think and what you say and the response that came in the person. So I tell people very often that when I practice, I'm like a gypsy that says to the person who comes, he says, uh, you are someone who has many friends. And the person's face falls because she doesn't have any friends. <laughs> and the gypsy says, but very few real friends. <laughs> and speak from there. But for some people, it's very hard to go inside and speak from there. And we're not denying that. And we, it was mentioned in both speakers. 